So, are you ready to duel against the uh, monarchs? Yeah, let's do this. I'll go first. I'll start with the Kashtira Fenrir, special summoning him in attack position. I'll attempt to use this effect to search for Kashtira Ogre. What's Ogre doing in Monarchs? Mm -hmm. You see, I'll use Tenacity of the Monarchs, revealing the Kashtira Ogre in my hand to search out a Monarch spell or trap. It's a Monarch? That's right. Can I search now? Uh, no, I'll Ash Blossom. No! Hello everyone! Today I am showcasing one of my favourite deck lists. It's the first deck I ever played getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh! It's my birthday, so I thought I'd do a deck that I really do enjoy, and that is Monarchs. Now, Monarchs in the current year aren't very good, um, as I've come to find out after playing it at Locals and on Master Duel, but in Master Duel, where it's a best of one, it's a bit more favourable. So we're going to be doing some tribute summoning today in the Master Duel Cup that is on currently. We'll go through a couple of games and I'll show you the deck list and enjoy! So going into game one, you'll notice in most of these games that we want to go first because we kind of need to. We've drawn a decent opening hand, not any tribute summons, but we can go for the Cash Tier of Fenrir to grab our Monarch from deck. Uh, we'll use the Morganite just to get it out of the way and do Domain of the True Monarch, summoning Eidos and then using Domain to reduce the level of Cash Tier Ogre and tribute summoning Ogre. What a good Monarch M board. We do have a Tribute Summon Monster, so he won't be able to summon from the extra deck. And he concedes at such a powerful end board that you have nothing else to do but concede. Going into game two, we've drawn a rough opening hand, but we'll see what Anchor draws for us. But first, we'll special summon the Ogre. He's going to use the Maxi here, which will probably net him one card, but let's just look at his deck and see what he's running. Uh, it looks like he's on Cash Tira, so we'll banish the Rise Heart from the top, I believe. Can't see it anymore, unfortunately. We'll use the Anchor Effect to draw one and the Special Summon itself, and then we'll go for Domain of the True Monarchs. We'll use the Domain to reduce the level of Erebus by by two and make it one Tribute Summon. We'll go into Erebus using the Anchor, sending a Prime Monarch and Pantheism to shuffle one card from his hand to his deck. We'll reveal three cards of Pantheism to let him add one. We'll reveal two Pantheisms and an Erupt, and we'll take the Erupt, the Skill Drain, with extra steps. Now that we've got the Erupt and he can't splash the summon from the extra deck, this is going to be tough for him. He's going to go into Rota into the Rise Heart. We'll activate the Erupt here to negate everything on field. Kashtira Theosis will go into Unicorn and then he will set one. Not much he can do as a Kashtira player. Uh, but we'll just go straight to battle. We're going to swing into the Rise Heart and then into the Unicorn, getting them both off the field. We could have stolen one, but we couldn't have done anything with it, so we'll keep that change of heart in hand for now. He's going to special summon the Fenrir and end his turn. Since its effect is negated, he won't be able to use it, which is fine by us. We haven't got some good draws, but that's fine. We'll just change of heart the Fenrir and go straight to face and beat this Cash Tira player with Monarchs in 2023. As you can see, Cash Ogre is the best Monarch anyone could ever hope for. So this game features a brutal misplay, which I will point out as soon as it happens and you'll probably see. We've got a good opening hand though, we'll show Tenacity of the Monarch showing the Ether to add the Prime Monarch. We can discard the Prime Monarch using Pantheism and then draw two. Some pretty good draws here and then here's where the misplay happens. We'll go for Anchor Morphrite to draw one and then we special summon Anchor before even special summoning the Ogre. We've missed out on the best Monarch in the entire game. Now... He's going to activate the Floor Disc because we special summon from the extra deck, which is a pain in our ass, but that's fine by us. 2500 attack, that will do. We will activate Return of the Monarch and then use Pantheism in Grave, revealing the Field Spell and two Pantheisms. If you didn't see my Epic Mind Games there, Epic Mind Games, Mind Hacks, shout out. Um, we revealed a Royal Domain and then two Pantheisms. Thinking that we want him to add the field spell, but really we want this pantheism here. We use a pantheism to get rid of the Stormforce, drawing it into a change of heart, which is very, very useful. We use change of heart and then tribute summon Vanity's Fiend using his monster. Because we tribute summon, we can search with Return of the Monarchs. We grab the Vanity's Fiend for a future turn. Now, we would have a Ogre here as well if I wasn't absolutely fucking stupid, but luckily he doesn't have much. He can normal summon the Ecclesia, adding Albazoa, and that's about it. 
Now, the top deck we get here is absolutely insane. We get a Morganite, which is going to help us close out the game significantly. We're going to use the Morganite and then activate Pantheism from Graveyard, revealing a Erupt and two Tenacity of the Monarchs. No matter what he adds, we can get exactly what we want. We use the Tenacity of the Monarchs. We'll grab a Stormforth instead, because why not? It's a pretty good card. We use the Stormforth, summon Edos to get an extra Tribute Summon, Tribute 2 to summon Ether, and then use the Return to grab Erebus. We'll Tribute his monster to summon Majesty's Fiend, and we we would have lethal here if we had summoned the best monarch in the game, which is Ogre. But this is still a pretty good board. Uh, luckily, he's going to activate his field spell and summon a monster and realize he can't special summon. He can't activate monster effects. And that's about it. That's all she wrote. So this is my monarch deck list right here. As you can see, there is no extra deck, which kind of makes this cheap. Uh, but then you look at the main deck and you go, what the fuck? Uh, so we'll start off with our normal summons. We have, well, all of the normal summons, it's Monarch. But our Tribute Fodder, we have two Idea. Or I never know how to say this, Idea. Uh, and then three Edos. So this summons out the Idos. And this gives you an extra Tribute Summon. Uh, so you basically, this is basically Ash Magnet. So you could cut these, to be honest. Um, but this lets you tribute someone another time, so these are pretty mandatory. We have three Vanities Fiend. You can't search these, but tribute summoning them is insane and is a game winner on its own. We run one Majesty's Fiend, which you can search off some of the Monarch spells because it has a kind of Monarch stat line. Uh, so it is a good one to have as a one-off. And we have some special summons. We have two Fenrir. We would run three if it would let us, but it's limited in Master Duel. And this could actually search Kashtira Ogre, which, as you saw by the intro skit, this is a Monarch. The 2800-1000 stat line means you can use some of your Monarch spells and traps, revealing Kashtira Ogre to get its effect off. So if you don't draw any of your big Monarchs, you can search out Ogre with Fenrir and pop off from there. Now, the funny thing about Monarchs is you don't actually want to see many of the big boys very often. We run one Ether and two Erebus. They're good, um, but compared to summoning like a Vanity's Fiend or a Majesty's Fiend, they're just not as good. Um, but they're still good, and it's Monarchs, so we have to put the Monarchs in there, right? We have three Anchor Morphrite which lets you draw one card and then a special summon it for more tribute fodder. Because we have no cards on our extra trick, extra deck this works perfectly uh, please be aware that you can't use it with stormforth on the same turn though our only going second card really is change of heart since we can use it as use their monsters as tribute fodder but you can cut this if you really want to go full going first we have three tenacity of the monarchs which reveals one monarch card or one card with monarch stat lines and add one monarch spell or trap which is insane again this is ash magnet but it's really good when it resolves three pantheism of the monarchs this is your bread and butter this this is not once per turn well the second effect is but you send one monarch spell or trap from your hand to the graveyard and draw two and then in the grave you can banish it and select three monarch spell traps and the opponent adds one to your hand so the draw two isn't once per turn so you can do this multiple times but the search is we run time tearing morganite now this is one of the few decks i actually think this works in other than the stun it lets you draw two cards in your draw phase at summon twice per turn which is the big thing but you can't activate cards from your hand um which is fine. You, you don't really care about hand traps, so you're not running any. Uh, so drawing two and summoning two particularly is nuts in a deck where you're tribute summoning. We have three, Domain of the True Monarch. This is pretty much mandatory. While you control tribute summon monster and no cards in your extra deck, you can lock your opponent out of the extra deck. So they can't special summon from the extra deck um, as long as you control a tribute summon monster. And plus you get 800 attack when you attack with a tribute monster, but that doesn't really come up too often. You can also reduce the level of 1, 28,000 and 1,000 defense monster in your hand by 2, which includes the ogre. So if you really want to tribute some of the ogre, you can if you are desperate. You run 1 March of the Monarchs, which stops tribute some monsters from being targeted or destroyed by card effects. Insane with a Vanity's Fiend. Return of the Monarchs, whenever you tribute, you get to search a monarch stat line from your deck. Not great. Um... I see it's nice for recursion, but I would actually be tempted to cut this, but I know that's that's blasphemy. Um, three Monarch Stormforth, one of the best cards in the deck, let you tribute, lets you tribute one of your opponent's monsters on the turn, no targeting or anything. 
and let me just show off this royal and another royal this is the reason i love master Duel. they've just given me two royals for one of my favorite decks we run one monarchs erupt which is basically skill drain that you can only activate when you control a tribute summon monster but your tribute summon monsters do not get negated so you can put this up with a vanishes fiend or something and really just destroy the game and then we have the prime monarch when this is in the graveyard. You can banish a Monarch Spell Trap from Grave and Special Summon it. So it's more tribute fodder. This is what you want to be discarding off the Pantheism. So the ideal end board is a Majesty's Fiend or a Vanity's Fiend plus an Erebus or a Fenrir. That's usually the board you want to go for. As you saw in the games, ideal end board doesn't come up every time. But when it does, it's nuts. And as long as you get one of your floodgates up, that is the, the key of this deck. That is what monarchs have become. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what deck brought you back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Whether it be casual or competitively. I'd love to see what interested people to get back into this card game. Because it is, it is hell to learn. Um, but it's a lot of fun and I want to see what brought you all back. That being said, if you made it this far in the video, please do feel free to hit subscribe. New Yu-Gi-Oh! videos each week. and. As always, happy dueling.